In this video, I will be showing you how to create a program that enables you to rotate the image of the cat. This can be achieved by first clicking on the cat and then moving the mouse. The direction that the cat faces will be defined by the position of the mouse pointer or icon. The action of the mouse will cease when the mouse icon is more than 150 units from the sprite or cat. As can be seen, the cat won't rotate or change its direction when the mouse icon is more than 150 units from the cat. To get the cat to rotate again, I need to click on the cat once more and move the mouse icon or pointer up and down while keeping the icon close to the cat. But this program is capable of doing much more. Whenever the space bar is pressed on the keyboard, a ball will be fired from the cat. The direction of the ball will be defined by the direction the cat is facing. When the ball reaches the edge of the screen, the ball will disappear. Additional balls cannot be fired while the ball, which already has been fired, is in motion. I'll begin by trying to make the cat respond to the mouse click. This can be achieved by going to the events section and dragging in the block of code when the sprite is clicked. Once the sprite is clicked, I want the sprite or the image of the cat to continuously be rotated by the movement of the mouse until the mouse pointer is 150 units from the cat. This is why I need to go to the control section and drag in the repeat until block. I'll then go to the sensing section and drag in the distance to block and I'll make sure the mouse pointer has been selected. I then go to the operator section and drag in the greater than block. I set it up so that the repeat loop will continue to loop until the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than 150. I then go to the motion section and I drag in the block point towards and I ensure that the mouse pointer is selected and I place that block inside the repeat loop. I then test what I've done so far. As can be seen, the cat can be rotated by using the mouse as required. I needed to just click on the cat and then move the mouse up and down. If I move more than 150 units from the cat, I am unable to rotate the cat. Unless I go back and click on the cat once more. This program will require the creation of a variable which I am going to name cat direction. As the cat rotates, the direction of the cat will be assigned to or copied to the variable cat direction. This will allow the program to read and use the variable from other sprites. I go to the variables section and I click on the make a variable button. I name this variable cat direction. I want the variable to be available to other sprites, so I make sure the for all sprites option is selected, and I click OK. I click on the checkbox 
so that the variable isn't visible. I go to the set block. I make sure that cat direction has been selected. Then I drag this set block inside the repeat loop. I go to the motion section and I drag the direction object into the set block. By accessing the value stored in the variable cat direction, other sprites will be able to read and use the direction the cat is facing. The next thing I do is include another sprite, that is the basketball, into the program. I click on this middle button here to get a better view of the stage and sprite properties. And then I hover over the choose a sprite button and click on choose a sprite. It is here where I click on basketball. With the basketball sprite selected, I change the size down to 50%. The X coordinate of the basketball is changed to negative 180 and the Y coordinate is changed to negative 25. The basketball is now over the cat. I then click on the invisible button to hide the basketball. I want the basketball to respond to the user pressing the spacebar. To do this, I go to the events section and drag in when space is pressed. I ensure that space is selected. I make the programming area a little larger. I want the basketball to always begin its motion from x is negative 180 and y is negative 25. So I go to the motion section and drag the go to xy block. I ensure that the x coordinate is negative 180 and the y coordinate is negative 125. I then drag in the point in direction object. I go to the variables section and drag in the cat direction variable so that the direction the basketball is pointing will now be the same as the cat. I then go to the looks section and drag in the show block so that the cat is visible whenever the space bar is pressed. I then go to the control section and drag in the repeat until loop. I want the basketball to move until it touches the edge. So I go to the sensing section and drag in the touching object and I ensure that edge is selected. I then go to the motion section and I drag in the move block into the repeat loop and I make sure the number of steps is 10. I then go back to the control section and drag in the weight block into the repeat loop. I set the number of seconds to 0 0.02. The repeat loop will ensure that the basketball will move 10 steps in the direction the cat is facing every 0 0.02 seconds. I then finish the program by going to the looks section and dragging in the hide block at the end. This will ensure that the basketball will disappear when it eventually reaches the edge of the screen or stage. I test the program. An additional basketball is not fired from the cat while the basketball is already in motion. This is because the program is unresponsive while the repeat loop is being executed. If the movement of the basketball is too slow, it can be sped up by increasing the steps in the move block. So I'll change that to 20. And it can also be um, sped up by decreasing the seconds the program waits. I'll change that to 0.01. So now I'll test the program 
And as you can see, that basketball moves a lot faster. 